Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Oh, we got a fun one for you today. We've got a little floating WhatsApp button on the site there. When you click on it, it's a live link which will take them to WhatsApp. If they're on a tablet or on a phone with WhatsApp on it, it'll open the app for them and they can start a little chat that way. Really easy to do and a really great thing to have on your site. So let's take you through it. Okay, so we're here we have our site. If we look over to the left hand side there, we've got our little WhatsApp button. And as you can see, it's sort of pulsing in and out. I've got it doing it fairly slowly, so it's not too annoying. If we roll down our site here, it's going to stay on top there. It's fixed positioning. If I hover over it, it's going to stop animating. And of course, if you click on it, it's going to prompt you to start a chat in WhatsApp. And if you're on a mobile phone or a tablet with the WhatsApp app on it, it'll open up a chat on that number for you. So let's go back. And I'll show you how to do this. It's really easy. I'm going to enable my visual builder. I'm going to go down. I'm going to delete what we've got going on here. And we'll start from scratch. Okay, I'm going to start a new row somewhere. It really doesn't matter too much where you put it. We're going to be using fixed positioning for this. So I'll stick it on the end of here. I'm going to use a single column in mine. And for the icon, funnily enough, we're going to use an icon module. There's an icon module. Let's find the WhatsApp. There it is right there. I want to use the one without the background and we'll create our own background with it. If I click on it, you can see it down at the bottom of the page there. Now I'll come back to the link in a minute and tell you exactly how you can live link to your WhatsApp number. But let's just decorate this thing first. I'm going to go over to design. The icon itself, I'm going to make that one white. I'm going to take it down to about 30 picks, something like that, whatever works for you. Actually, I think 50 picks would be good. That's a good sort of size. Now WhatsApp is usually a green little app there. So I'm going to put a green background on mine. Back in content is always where you'll find background. I'm going to make it green. And let's just shape it up a bit. We can do that with padding. We go back to our design here. Spacing. Here's the padding. Let's try giving it three pixels on top, perhaps. Try giving it the same on the bottom. I think we have to adjust this because it doesn't look quite centered to me. Now let's do bit more on the left and right. I'm just putting in the number. It's putting in the picks for me there. That's not too bad. I think I need a little bit more on the left and right. Let's just take that up a bit with the little arrows here. And also on this side. That looks okay. Obviously shape it to how you want to shape yours. You can make it perfectly round if you want to. You want to make sure it's perfectly square first. If you want to make it round, put a really high pixel value in here like 50. That'll make it round for you. I actually want mine just to have slightly rounded corners. So I'm going to put five picks on there. It's got those slightly rounded corners. Fantastic. Great. Well, we've got our little app there. Now let's go back to the link and I'll tell you exactly how you can create a WhatsApp link. In the icon link URL here, I'm going to type HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. Then we need to Put in WA for WhatsApp dot ME, then another forward slash. Then we can put in our number and it has to be in international format with no gaps. So for instance, United States would be one, England would be four, four. After the international code, you want to put your area code and then the number and you're good to go. Now, if you wanted to link in the same window, that's fine. It'll take them away from your site. I'll probably have this open in a new tab. That way it'll open in a new tab over here and your site will stay open. Great. So we've got our link going on there and we've got our little icon happily happening there. Well, let's put it up over here. I'm actually going to do that with the row because I find it works better with the divi. You can actually do it with the module, but I'm going to do it with the row, like I say. So let's save our changes here. We'll go into the row, the green tab. I'll give it a background just so you can see what's going on exactly. 
So there's our row and it's stretching out all the way over there, both sides. First thing I want to do is take any padding away top and bottom. We can do that in design, spacing. Put a zero in the top there and hit the chain. It'll automatically do the bottom for you. Once we've done that, we can adjust the width of the row to be the same as our little icon here. So if we close up spacing, you'll find sizing just above that. I'm going to take the width down to, well, I know that icon's 50 pixels, so let's try 60 pixels and see what happens then. Yeah, I think that's going to work fine. Doesn't matter if it's spilling over a little bit there. I just don't want it spreading out of the whole page in case it gets in front of something that we want to click on over here or something. So once we've got that in there, we can take our content away. Or I should say we can take our background away. Now we can do a bit of positioning and we did this with a drop down menu the other day. We're going to use fixed positioning. I'm going to put mine over here. To do that, we're still in the row settings here. I'm going to go to my advanced down to position, I'm going to change it from relative fixed and it'll disappear. If you watched yesterday's video, you know where it's gone. It's up under our little nav bar up here and you can put it in the middle of your page, bottom of your page, under, oh, it's under a section there, right in the middle of your page. You get the idea anywhere on this grid you want. I'm going to put it up the top and we'll adjust it vertically. to whereabouts we want it. And if you want to, you can adjust this more on tablet and mobile by clicking on this little phone icon up here. Common to all Divi modules, if you hover over the dark writing within any module, row or section, you'll see some little icons pop up. If there's a mobile phone type icon there, you can have completely different values for tablet and phone. So you can put this in different positions on tablet and phone if you want to. Mine's gonna work fine just like that. Horizontal offset. Well, I just want to take it out from the side just a little bit there. Fantastic. Now then, now it's there. Let's roll down our site and make sure it's going to stay on top. Nope, it's fallen behind there and there and there. That's not going to work. So all we need to do is adjust what they call the Z index. Now we're going to adjust the Z index. So for anybody that doesn't know what Z index is, Z index dictates what elements appear on top of other elements in the site. So if this has got a Z index of seven, this has got a Z index of eight, this will always appear in front of the one with the lower number there. Higher numbers will always appear in front. And what we've got to do in a minute is adjust that little icon to have a higher Z index than the sections that it's scrolling over because it's falling behind some of the sections and that's not going to work for us. We want it visible at all times. So for anybody that doesn't know, that Z index really important in web design. Let's get back to the build. So I'm going to totally partially obscure it so we can see half of it. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to slide this up until it's on top of that one. I'm going to roll down the site and make sure that that's going to stay on top of every other section. We're good to go there. Fantastic. Great. Well, the last thing I want to do is animate this. I had mine just pulsing a little bit. Really easy to do again. So we'll save our changes. We've actually got to go into the module itself for this today. So let's roll over it. I can just get to my module. If you have trouble getting to it once it's absolutely positioned over there, what we can do is go down to our little purple button here, get a wireframe view. That'll take us to back end. And you can get into your icon that way if you want to. Once you're in there, flip back to where you were. Okay, we're going to write a little bit of CSS. So we're going to go over to the advanced to custom CSS. And don't let this put you off. Custom CSS or cascading style sheets. I love adding CSS to sites. It really does enable you to design and do things that otherwise you're just not going to be able to do with the regular site features. Don't let it scare you. It's a really great thing to learn. If you write a bit of code and it messes something up, just delete it and everything will go back to how it was. You don't have to worry about messing up your site with it. So I would encourage you to 
have a go at CSS because it really is great stuff. I will put any code I write down below the video. But as I mentioned, it's not a bad idea to get in the habit of actually writing it yourself because it's going to take your skills way up to the next level. I'm really working in the freeform CSS tab, which they recently added a few months ago. And to affect this particular module, all we have to do is say selector, S-E-L-E-C-T-O-R. Then I'm going to open and close some curly brackets and tell it what we want it to do. Well, I want it to animate. So I'm going to say animation, colon. We'll give our animation a name. Let's call it scale, or scalar, or whatever you want to call yours. It doesn't matter. It does have to be unique though. There can't be anything else called that. I'm going to have mine running for perhaps three seconds. I want it to keep going and going. So I'm going to say infinite. Fantastic. Now we've told it what we want to do. We've actually got to create this animation called scalar. So if we drop down a little bit, we're going to be using keyframes for this today. By the way, Divi has an AI. You can actually ask the AI to write your code. It's pretty good. I've had to adjust it a few times. It is a paid feature. I think you get so many free though. But I like writing my code and it's a great thing to learn how to do. So as I was saying, we're going to use keyframes key to make this animation. I'm going to say at keyframes. Then the name of the animation, which was scalar. We can now open and close some more curly brackets and create this animation. So I'm going to say at 0% when the page loads, basically, we'll open and close some more curly brackets there. I'm going to use transform scale. So round brackets at the end of scale there. And initially, I don't want it to scale at all. So I'm going to put one in there, which will be 100% normal. And it's thrown up a flag there because I've been talking and I've left an S out of transform scale with CSS. You need to spell it right or it's not going to work. Okay, so there we are, 0%, or well, basically, when the page loads, second one of our three seconds, it's not going to do anything, it's going to be regular size. I'm now going to copy that to our first curly bracket closing there. Control C to copy, I'm going to drop down one more. I'm going to paste it in there, and we'll say at 50%, or one and a half seconds, I want it to be perhaps 1.1. 1 .1. 0.1. So it'll be 10% bigger. If you look over there now, that's pulsing up and down. Just exactly what I want. If you want it to be more exaggerated, of course you can make it bigger. That's a little too much for me. We'd have to pull it out from the side a little bit from that one. Or if you want to speed it up or slow it down, if you want to slow it down, give it a bigger value in the time there. That's five seconds. And that's very gradual there. If you want to speed it up, really get their attention. Give it a second. And it's like it's having a heart attack over there. But I was happy with that three seconds. We'll put this code down below for anybody that wants to copy it. But it's not a bad idea to write it out and get used to it. Great. Well, I think we're good to go. We've got everything going on there. We've got our link in there. We've got our animation going. And we've got it in fixed position. So let's save this. Save draft or publish if you're ready. Let's exit the visual builder. There's our little pulsing WhatsApp button. Let's make sure it's going to stay on top there on our site here. Perfect. When I click on it, it should open the WhatsApp in a new tab. And there it is. And if you want to chat, you can chat. Fantastic. Just what the doctor ordered. Let's go back to the top. Great. So there you have it, guys. There's how to add a little animated WhatsApp icon to your website. And this one's got a live call feature as well, which gives it even more functionality. It's another little eye-catching thing to have on your site. Another interactive feature for your visitors, which is always a good thing. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please hit like, share and comment below. It's always great to hear from you. Please subscribe to our channel. Everything that you do down there helps me come up with ideas to make new videos. 
Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. We'll make a little demo video just like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.